Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Escape. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and the great part about it is it's going to be a hidden cross tube meaning that really the only thing that you're going to see of the hitch is going to be the receiver end here as well as your safety chain loops and another great thing is it's a two inch by two inch which is going to be a really nice standard size for a bunch of different applications so if you're looking at ball mounts bike racks or cargo carriers you have plenty of options available now, when you do put your accessories in place, uh, you are going to need to pick up a pin and clip. A lot of your accessories will come with them, and you're going to need a 5 8 pin, and that's going to hold all your accessories in place. Now, if you want something that's going to be able to stay on the vehicle and locked in place, we have locking pins available here at eTrailer, which makes it really nice because you can leave your accessories on and not have to worry about them disappearing in the hands of someone else. Now, if you plan on towing, you're gonna to need to use your safety chain loops here, which are gonna be a plate style, and they're easily accessible and able to use a standard S-style hook, as well as even a larger clevis style will be able to go on here pretty easily. Now, you are gonna to wanna to adhere to the weight capacities on the hitch, which they're fairly decent. Your gross trailer weight rating is gonna be coming in at 3,500 pounds, which is the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded on. Now, you also have a tongue weight rating of 525 pounds, so that's gonna be your suspended weight, like your cargo carriers or bike racks, which at 525 is a decent amount. Now it can't be used with weight distribution and before you just hook up and start towing, you're gonna to wanna to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle's capable of and then compare that with the hitch. Take the lower of those two numbers just so you stay safe. Now when choosing accessories, you wanna make sure that you have clearance. So if, whether it be a trailer or even your fold-up accessories, you're gonna to wanna to know roughly how far you need to extend your accessory. So from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, you're looking at about four inches. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and also we're gonna check our ground clearance. And this is gonna help determine if you need a rise or a drop on your vehicle. And this is coming in from the top of the receiver tube to the ground at 13 inches. So a decent amount of uh, clearance here, but also something to keep in mind when you have those suspended accessories on, as you go up an incline, that's gonna tilt down. So something to just think about while you're headed off to your adventure with your cargo carrier bike rack on. Now with that height, you do wanna keep in mind that you may need a rise or drop for the accessories loaded on here. So make sure you measure accordingly. Now, as far as installation goes, this one's pretty easy. You are gonna be drilling out the holes to get our hardware up in place. So you may need to have some grinding bits or a cutting wheel. And we will be dropping the exhaust to give ourselves a little bit more clearance. But overall, it's not terribly hard and definitely can be done in your driveway or garage. And I would say about 45 minutes. So uh, let's take this into the bay and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to get your hitch installed. We're gonna begin our installation by lowering down the exhaust. That's gonna give us more clearance to be able to get our hitch up in place. And also where the exhaust brackets are located might cause a little bit of issue getting the hitch in place. So we're gonna be dropping those down. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to support our exhaust. So if you're doing this in your driveway or in your garage, you can put something under here, maybe a block of wood, but you just don't want that exhaust hanging. So I'm gonna just find two points in my suspension here and just kind of create a cradle for our exhaust. That way when it lowers down, uh, it'll be supported. Our exhaust brackets, instead of taking the isolators off, we're gonna go ahead and just get this whole bracket to drop down. And that's just gonna be a 10 millimeter nut. So we'll go ahead and get that removed. Now during this whole process, I highly suggest having a nice spot to keep your hardware just for reinstallation purposes being a little bit easier. Now this one here where our wiring is attached to is actually gonna be an 11 millimeter. So go ahead and you can change your socket out and we'll get this taken down. And then below this bracket, then we have our 10 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and get that one removed. We're gonna to want to mock up our hitch by just kind of putting it up where it's going to mount up and you're gonna see a lot of the holes will line up, but we are gonna to need to enlarge one of them to be able to get our hardware up. So you can see our first two towards the rear of the vehicle are gonna line pretty easily. This back one, uh, unfortunately, doesn't line up spot on. So when I enlarge this to pass our hardware, I'm gonna to go towards the rear, rear of the vehicle when enlarging it, and that way we can get our stud in place there. So go ahead and get your cutting utensils. So if you're using a uh, Dremel or a die grinder bit, you're gonna to wanna to grab that and make a note here that this is where you're gonna enlarge it. We're gonna be doing that on both sides to be able to pass our hardware through. 
So I'm gonna be using a die grinding bit to enlarge this and I'm gonna have my carriage bolt handy because we're gonna be passing this through and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have enough clearance. Since we do have to go back a decent amount to gain or give us our mounting point for our hitch, I'll go ahead and keep this handy to make sure we're able to pass this through. Another option here is gonna be using a step bit or a large drill bit and that's gonna help enlarge us a little bit quicker. In addition to lengthening it, I also widened it, and that way we can get the head of the carriage bolt to go in. Best way I've found a lot of times is to kind of go in at an angle like that. And if you're worried that it's not gonna have a solid contact, no worries, because our spacer block's also gonna go up here and create a nice mounting point for it. So uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that both sides are able to get our hardware, and then after, you just wanna go back with just a little bit of spray paint, since we have raw metal edges here, just to kind of protect it from any rust or corrosion, and just throw some paint on there and that way it'll at least be uh, covering up that uncoated metal there. Now we need to get our carriage bolt and spacer blocks in the corresponding holes for the hitch. And we're gonna start at the furthest back one here and take this coiled fish wire and we're just gonna take that and feed it towards the front. And if you need to put a little bend on there, sometimes that makes it a little bit easier. And then just have your finger ready uh, to get that other coiled end and then pull it through that hole that we enlarged. And then if you need to, you can put a bend on this tail end here, that way it doesn't pull all the way through. And then we'll take our spacer block, we'll just feed this over the coiled end, and you can go ahead and feed that up into the frame rail. And then your carriage bolt, you're just gonna thread onto that coiled section. And then feed your carriage bolt in. And if you need to, you can kind of Feed it backwards too for that angle. And just make sure that's all there. And then we're gonna just pull this wire until we get this to pop through. Now leave your fish wire on. This is gonna make it a lot easier when we put the hitch up. And we're just gonna go ahead and do the same for this next hole. And then we're gonna be using a reverse fish wire technique here, which I'll show you. For our reverse fish wire technique, it's pretty easy here. I'm just gonna feed my spacer block on and hold that. And then just take your carriage bolt, thread it on here. We'll then pass this up, same with our spacer block. And then just pull this directly down. Now we'll go ahead and repeat on the other side. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to grab an extra set of hands and also have a serrated flange nut ready to go. Cause we're gonna to try to get one just uh, thread it on there, that way it supports it. And once you have one on each side, it's gonna make it a lot easier to get the rest of the hardware up. So go ahead, take the fish wire and feed it through the corresponding hole. As we raise this up, just make sure that our carriage bolts pop through where they need to be. And then at this point, you can pull your fish wire off uh, one of them. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you hold this in place either by using kind of the pressure from the hitch. So I'm gonna kind of just hold a little tension here and that way it doesn't push up in the frame. And then we're just gonna get a couple threads started here on each side. And then we can go through and get the rest of our hardware hand tightened on. So now that I have one started on each side, it's gonna support itself and I can go ahead and get the rest of our flange nuts on. So I have them all hand tightened on. There's still a little bit of slack here, so you can really actually kind of move the hitch. So you want to make sure that it's nice and centered up before tightening this all down. And I'm going to go ahead and get it snugged up using a three quarter inch socket. And that's just going to raise it up. Now you don't have to get too crazy by using an impact or anything like that, because we're going to come back with our torque wrench and get those properly torqued immediately after this. So let's go ahead. This is nice and centered so we can start snugging it up. Now using the torque setting that's found in the instruction manual in your torque wrench, we'll go ahead and get these tightened down. And this is just gonna make sure that it's not gonna be too tight on the threads causing any stress, but also it's gonna be tight enough to uh, you know, stay on there the lifespan of the hitch. Now if you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at eTrailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store as well. And we'll just go through and get these all properly torqued down.
and get our exhaust put back in place. And now there is an alignment pin here on our bracket. So just make sure that goes in the corresponding hole and we should be able to get this tightened up. And on your passenger side, also don't forget that 11 millimeter nut that holds our wiring harness up. So now at this point, you can take whatever you're using to support the exhaust out of the way. And all that's left to do is start using your hitch. And that was a look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Ford Escape.